live. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome. 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 Come on in. Come on in. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Top of the morning. May 15th, 2021. Come on in. Come on in. Let me know where you're coming from. Monique Watford, I see you. Stafford, Virginia. Janine Wilkins, Alaska. Uh, Lana Nieves is in the building. Josh Tovar is in the building. Principal Tovar. Demetrius Scott's in the building. Charles Kalen Pruitt. Henry An An Anderson. Brandy Johnson. Stephanie Jacobs. Allison Gary. John Herricks. They're all in the building. Yesenia. Uh, Cigara, I think, yes, yeah, Cigaroa is in the building. Linda O'Leary's in the building. Regito, oh man, they're going quick. Miller is in the building. Lawanda Smith is in the building. My wife, Kimberly Broughton Cafele is in the building. Superintendent Finch is in the building. Brittany Charlene Hadi, aha moment with Andrea is in the building. Hannah Taylor, Jocelyn Nelson, Hannah, I said that one already. Tony McClenney is in the building hit the retweet as you come in hit the share button as you come in let them know we are in week 55 greg sneed is in the building ty scott davis is in the building Ty uh, tyana wright bradley's in the building teacher sanders 73 is in the building dot mckeever uh jeter is in the building danielle manoa or, Man or Manole, I'm, I'm not sure. Principal Otis Kitchen is in the building. Let them know. Hit that share button. Hit that retweet button. Let them know we're in the shout out mode right now. We do this for five minutes. I came on an hour late. Ohio Girl Jones is in the building. Sean Rivera is in the building doing big things. Uh, Jonathan, where we at? Mahan is in the building. Shalita Hines, some of you I miss. You know, it's moving fast. I'm on four four platforms so it's moving very quickly but i appreciate that charlena hadi is in the building jasmine allen is in the building glasher robinson is in the building a lot of people in the building but that's okay because the building is big it's for assistant principals and others who tune in cammy barry is in the building mike j has checked in Come on in, hit the share button. Let the folks know Stephanie Gordon is in the building. Let them know it's that time, week 55. I'm calling this the milestone week. This is not an ordinary week, so I didn't put together an ordinary discussion. Uh, come on in, come on in. Rodney Richardson is checking in. Orlando Gunn is checking in. Come on in, hit that share button, hit that retweet button, let them know. Marcus Scott, my man, is in the building. Sheikah Houston is in the building. Like I say, check her out on Facebook. Check check out Josh Tovar on Facebook. I don't know if Sean Hurt checked in, but if he did or if he didn't, check him out on Facebook. There's a lot of folks on here. Marcus Jackson, Dr. Marcus Jackson's in the building. Check him out on Facebook. You know, we got a lot of... We got a lot of big time superstars that check in on Saturday morning. And I want to make sure that you know that they're here as well, because I want you to check out what the work they do. Those of you that I may not be familiar with your work, you know, let me know. So during the shout outs, I can I can send folks over to your page and see what you're doing. Come on in. We got Antoine Bellamy in the building. A.D. Faison is in the building. Come on in, hit that share button as you come in, hit that retweet button as you come in. If you belong to a Facebook group, hit them groups up, let them know. I think about this content all the time and I think about the people out there who need it, but may not know it exists or need it and not know they need it or need it, but their expectations are so low, they don't realize they need it. So just a variety of different people out here that could benefit from this information from a, a veteran school leader, a veteran principal, right? A veteran consultant. So come on in, hit the share button. Kathy, wait, wait, oh man, I can't make that up. Wayman, I think it is, is in the building. R R Rashard Davis, Christine Grise Anthus is in the building. Felicia Cloudy 
is in the building. Look here, y'all. I see what time it is. It's that time, man. We got a lot to do. It is one o'clock. I mean, no, it's not one o'clock. It's 11 o'clock. We got Jesus Juan Flores in the building. So with it being the time that it is, let me say to you formally now, good morning. Greetings. Welcome to week 55 of the virtual AP Leadership Academy. And I don't know about you. I don't know. But I think I know. I think I know. But I don't know definitively. But, but let me tell you how I feel right now. Let me let you know. I want you to know how I feel. I'm on fire. That's how I feel. That's how I feel. Let me tell you something, y'all. I got these construction guys outside working on the house. They banging and carrying on. I told them don't don't hit don't 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 work near this window just yet because I, I don't want this to be disrupted. But in the interim, this broadcast to be disrupted. But in the interim, I, I need them to hear me outside the walls of this house. And I need you to hear me a little bit better. I need the neighbors to hear me a little bit better. So I just want you to know that at 11.03 on Saturday, May 15th, I am on fire! Woo! That's how I'm feeling, y'all. Why? Somebody might be on here. They knew. They said, you know, people say, man, you got to listen to Prince Book of Failure on Saturday mornings. You got to listen to Prince Book of Failure. Or, or somebody, one of my clients, the people in the audience, I'm, okay, I'm going to tune in. He keeps saying tune in. And then you get to me and I'm on here screaming like, that's what I tuned in for? Listen, y'all. That's part of leadership. The leadership is your energy. The leadership is your excitement. The leadership is your enthusiasm. The leadership is your passion. See, that's what leadership is. Not just textbook. But what do you bring in terms of your presence? That's leadership too. See, what do you bring in terms of your enthusiasm, your joy, your excitement for the work? And for the students and for the staff, that's leadership too, see? So I'm not starting any day without letting you know that despite, because look at the world right now, right? Look at, I mean, look at it. Where the direction the pandemic's going with vaccines, the various different things happening out here in the U.S., Israel and Palestinians. I mean, it's, 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 it's a lot, man. But but with that narrow focus that you and I have, we still got to maintain the flame. Let me say that to you again, because you might have missed that one. We still have got to maintain the flame. All right. So with that said, let me give you my quick motivational message. Somebody might have said you just gave it right. I'm calling this protecting your patience. Once again, protecting your patience. What am I saying? I'm saying, you know, I've been saying for 54 weeks now, 55 and, and beyond that you got to move with a sense of urgency. And, and, I, and, I, and I, will, I will maintain that. You got to move with a sense of urgency in this work. However, you've also got to sustain a level of patience in this work. Because it's going to take time. Building takes time. It doesn't happen overnight. It takes time. So as much as you want to hold yourself accountable, as much as you want to get the work done, you've still got to have some level of patience toward getting there. So protect it. Protect your patience. Protect your level of patience within you. Because if you don't, the urgency can overwhelm you to the point that you feel in a sense of burnout because you haven't balanced the urgency with the patience, the persistence with the patience. You got to balance the two. So protect it, guard it, shield it, own it, guard against anything interfering with your patience. And then my word of the week is, it's an interesting one. 
The word, I didn't even have to give this one thought. My word of the week is me, M-E, me. Man, what are you saying, Principal Faye? Me? That's a word? We, me? Yeah. I'm talking about you, though, not me. You. Let, let's say you and I, us. I'm saying here, with that word of the week being me, I'm saying you got to look out for me, meaning you. You got to look out for you. See, sometimes we 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 expend so much energy toward the children, toward toward the school, toward the staff, toward the community, toward the parents, that sometimes we forget me. And now me is not being taken care of. Me, there's no balance. Me, there's no self-care. See, you got to you got to make sure that with all the work you do, everything about your leadership, there's you at the center. See, it's easy to say there's the students at the center, and that's very noble. But 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 it can't be any them without you. See, in terms of their progress, they need you. So me has got to be the word of the day today. Protect me, meaning you. Somebody could check in here late and they just heard that part and they say, he's on here saying protect him, protect him, right? Protect me, meaning you, protect you, guard you, take care of you, be delicate with you, be sensitive about you because you matter. So my word of the day is me, take care of me, meaning you. Let's move on. Congratulations to all those folks landing those positions. Man, I'm getting these emails and, and inboxes and DMs from people every day, seven days a week. I got a big one this morning, right? So so, so I'm saying to all of you out there, you know, that, that are giving me credit because I'm not asking for it. But those of you who like, man, Principal Kefele, the, the Virtual Leadership Academy, the, the videos, the interview videos, the Aspiring Principal 50 with the chapter on interviewing. Right. All that stuff, man. I'm, I'm I'm a leader now. I got the position. Hey, I'm glad you told. Me. Now, keep on. Keep on keeping on. And don't think because you got that. This is no longer relevant. It's still relevant. It's relevant throughout your career. Right. So congrats to you all. Next. um, This is week 55, y'all. Woo. I, I started this thing off with 18 weeks. I said, I'm going to do this for 18 weeks, May to August, and then, you know, I'm back on the road. I thought the virus would be gone, <laughs> and it didn't. So I said, well, since I'm home anyway, let me just extend it to 55. I don't know how I came up with that number, 55, but I just, I did. And here we are, week 55, having missed a week, right? Just in, in one, a couple of weeks, I wasn't even feeling well, but we kept, you didn't know it. Just kept on going, right? 55 weeks, but now we're going to 100, right? So, so this is just a milestone. It's sort of like a plateau, but I'm going right to 100. So before I get started, I just want to tell you the format because the, the, the new format starts next week. So just put this in your notes. We're going to call we're going to call it Virtual AP Leadership Academy. That's still going to be the focus, but I'm going to have different themes. Every first Saturday, it's going to be called Let's Talk AP Leadership. Let's Talk Assistant Principal Leadership. Every first Saturday, 11 o'clock Eastern time. Every second Saturday, let's talk classroom equity. Every second Saturday to coincide with my new book that you guys have been keeping number one on Amazon with new releases, The Equity and Social Justice Education 50. That book is, is perennially for the past four weeks, number one new release on Amazon, and it didn't even come out yet. It comes out on May 26th, so soon, but you can pre-order now. Please do, right? Get, your, get, get it ahead of time so you don't hit me up later saying it's out of print, right? Pre-order it now. If you got a second device right now, just go to the second device and order it now on Amazon, ASCD.org, my website, principalcafele.com, barnesandnoble.com, wherever. But order your copy. It's, 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 I'm, I'm, man, I'm so, I'm just excited about that book. But that, so that second week will coincide called Let's Talk Classroom Equity. So that'll be the second Saturday in every month. The third Saturdays of the month, Let's talk social justice education. So that will coincide with the book as well. And then the fourth Saturday is to be called Let's Talk AP and Principal Leadership. So the AP leadership where you are, the principal leadership where you're going. And then when there's a fifth Saturday, I'll come up with something. I'm not sure yet. Something. So that's where we're going. And I'm going to shorten these. I'm not doing these hours and some change anymore unless I got something hot that I just need to keep going. The intent, my wife said, you, you, it ain't going to happen. My mother said it ain't going to happen. But the intent is 30 minutes. 
not including the, the announcements in the message. I'm talking about 30 minutes of content, right? So maybe like, so in about something like 1140, 1145, something like that, I'm going to try, right? But that's where it's at, right? Overarching question will remain the same. Does my assistant principal leadership, does my assistant principalship benefit my school academically? And then the two books will continue to be highly relevant. The assistant principal 50 and the aspiring principal 50. If you don't have either book yet, get them both. If you only have one, you need the other, right? So get your hands on both of them. Same sites, as I said, for the other book. So just get your hands on those books. And then finally, the fourth annual School Leadership Institute with Principal Kefele will take place July 13 and 14. I'm going to post a video about it uh, later today or tomorrow, but July 13 or 14 and 14, 1230 to 3.30 Eastern Daylight Time. Go to um, my my page, principalcafele.com. Scroll down to the announcements and you'll see it. And as my mother laughs when I say this every week, it's just a nominal fee, right? <laughs> my mother makes like big jokes when I say that, right? It's just a nominal fee, not much. Go on to the page, register. And then I'll see you July 13 and 14. It'll be very different from what we do on Saturdays, right? And then I'm done. Hit that share button, somebody. Hit it, hit it, hit it. Share button. If you're in Facebook groups, let all them groups know, right? Um, if you are on Twitter, hit the retweet button. YouTube, hit the share button if that's how it works. I've never shared from you. I don't know how it works on YouTube. If there's a share function, hit it. Let them know that I'm live on YouTube on my virtual AP Leadership Academy channel. Enough of that. Let's get into it. I didn't put the topic on my, my advertisements this week. It wasn't that I didn't want to. It was because I kept tweaking it. So I didn't want to put it one way. And then and then I get on live and it's something different. So I finally got it because I'm on live. Today's topic is, is principal leadership really, and the word really in capital letters, is principal leadership really for me? So I'm talking to APs here. I'm talking to perhaps new principals here who had this 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 very unusual year leading in the midst of a, a global pandemic. So I'm asking the question as my topic, is principal leadership really for me? And, and I designed this kind of differently. I, I, I brainstormed this one and I came up with these 30 questions. Now, 30 may sound like intimidating, like he getting ready to do two hours today. Now, nah, I'm not going to do a whole lot of commentary with these questions. I just want you to get these questions. I, I, I didn't see Kim Wilson Daniel's name out there that keeps the notes, but I'm going to assume that she's out. She's out here. And if she's not, she typically comes on and watch the video later and comes up with the notes and, and post them whenever she gets an opportunity to do so. So I want you to get all 30 of these questions and I want them to just stay with you. You know, like a lot of you, you're looking at the, the interview videos and you're using that to prepare. But I also want you to look at these 30 questions. I want you to hold on to these questions and, and just use them as you see fit through your journey until you become a principal. And then even when you become a principal, still make reference to them because you're going to find that they're relevant. So here's what I mean. Let me jump right into it. Number one. How would I handle? And all of these are going to pref they're prefaced by how would I handle? I'm asking you, if you were given a principalship, that's where I want your mind to be right now. If you were offered, I should say, offered a principalship, you applied for it, you were offered this principalship, and then this building was as these 30 questions will describe. Right. Not not all 30 will describe one school, but the various different elements of the 30 may be a part of that school. Thank you, Lisa Kimball, for that order. Right. So here I'm saying, number one, how would I handle inheriting a school where true leadership was previously lacking? Right. How would I handle a school where true leadership was previously lacking, right? Now, I just sat back and I noticed my shirt. Jersey City Giants, the, the minor league team to the New York Giants baseball team, which became the San Francisco Giants. One of the first black players to play in the in the, um, in the in, in professional baseball was Monty Irving. So he wore this jersey when he played for the Jersey City Giants, which were, who were known as the Little Giants as they were the minor league team to the big Giants, the New York Giants, who ultimately moved to San Francisco. So when you see the San Francisco Giants, 
they have a connection to Jersey City in terms of their previous minor league team. They don't exist anymore. The stadium doesn't even exist. Now it's condominiums, right? But that, at that time, just giving you that history. So let me go back to the question. How would I handle inheriting? And, and I live in Jersey City. How can I forget that? I'm home, right? So I said, let me wear the home shirt on the home jersey on week 55. How would I handle inheriting a school where true leadership previously was lacking? Right. So let's let's let, let me just talk a little bit about it because I'm not really going to give a lot of commentary to all of these because I want to be finished by 12. Um, so so here's the thing. You you you've been a, you 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 apply for this position. You went through the interview process and they put you in this school and you didn't have any say over the school. Obviously, you know, you, you're you going to go wherever it is an opening. So now you go there. But the vacuum in that building was the leadership. And because the vacuum in that building was the leadership, now the whole thing is, is has kind of crumbled over, over, over time that that leadership was there. So now when, we, when you talk about a rebuild of this school that you have inherited, the rebuild is pretty much the entire operation. And I'm asking you, because this is a real life scenario. It's not like I just created something in my imagination. This happens in the real world. So now here you are in this school. You've been excited. You've been watching the virtual AP Leadership Academy with me for 55 weeks. You've been studying other people, going to conferences, preparing yourself emotionally, mentally. And now here you are in the school and it is an absolute mess. It's a mess. Because the leadership that was previously there was inept. The leadership that was previously there was lacking. And now here you are in that space. I'm asking you, how would I handle inheriting a school where true leadership was previously lacking? I'm saying to you, get this question down, write it down or, or wait for Kim Wilson, Daniel, however you're going to do it. But realize, don't lock the storm door, but realize that see, I'm done multitasking, y'all. Realize that that could be your reality, right? That could be your reality. Number two, I got 30, y'all, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on each of these. How would I handle inheriting a school where true instructional leadership was non existent? Huh? True instructional leadership was non-existent. You, you walk into the school, you gun ho like, yeah, I'm getting ready to do this thing. I'm getting ready to do my thing, man. We taking this school to another level. But then you discover very quickly, either informed, staff let you know. They may let you know when they see you moving as an instructional leader. And they're like, wait a minute, we, we ain't used to this, like all this talking uh, about, about what you're about to come in. Are you in the classroom all the time? And now we having post-observation conferences, all this stuff going on? Like, wait a minute, man, man, we need to call the union president. Like, like, what's going on? This guy's in my classroom. This young lady's in my classroom all the time. See, they don't know that. That's not the culture there. So now they're making all sorts of phone calls. Some of them connected to the board. I mean, let me keep it real with you. Some of them connected to board members. They related, right? They have old friends, grew up together since first grade, whatever it is. Yo, we got this new principal you guys hired. And like, he's always in my classroom. Yo, we you know, we got this new principal, this, this this young lady. She's young too. And, and she's always in our classroom. Like, this is an invasion of our privacy. Like, what can we do about it? See, in other words, in that school, they it, that, that didn't exist. And now here you are. You've been listening to me. I'm preaching, man. I'm throwing flames at you saying you got to live in the classroom. You got to live in the classroom. You got to have a pre-observation conference. You got to have a post-observation conference. And now they calling the superintendent on you. They calling the assistant superintendent on you. They calling the board members on you. They calling the mayor on you, right? Because that happens in some places too. So they calling all these people like, so, so now they come at you like maybe you want to limit your time in the classrooms because it's making people uncomfortable. I mean, that could happen. If you, I mean, now if you want me to like sugarcoat, then say to me, write in the, just write it in the chat here. You need to sugarcoat. You being too real this morning, right? But if you want me to keep it real, then 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 just say keep it real. Just put it in the chat. Keep it real, cafe. Like so, see, I'm keeping it real until you tell me not to, right? So I'm saying to you, Kimberly, say you going too fast. <laughs> Listen, so I'm saying to you, you have to now put yourself in position to educate people. You have to have the audacity, though, that you're going to you're going to educate people. You're going to enlighten people to let them know this is leadership. You cannot avoid 
being in their classroom because now the next person that succeeds you, then they're going to come into a school that did not have true instructional leadership. So my question to you now goes back to the question I read. How would I handle, you know, we're keeping it self-reflective. How would I handle inheriting a school where true instructional leadership was non-existent? Now, probably as I brainstorm this list, like throughout the week, I probably can do a session on each individual question because there's so much to be said. But I'm just giving you this, you know, this template now for you to just think about, ponder over for for, you know, for a period of time. Right. Number number three. How would I handle inheriting a school with historically, traditionally low achievement levels? Right. Again, how would I handle inheriting a school with historically, traditionally low achievement levels? You, you all know you can walk into that school. Right. You can very much walk into that school. That's your new home. And achievement is not even on the radar. Right. It's, it's, it's not part of our reality. Achievement. <laughs> we, you know, like there's a mindset. I'm not doing any bashing of educators or anything, but there's this culture that has devolved into these low expectations. Right. These low standards. There's no high standard of excellence in this particular building that I have in my mind. So now here you come in and you give your first you, you conduct your first staff meeting and you're saying to the people, <laughs> Hey, we 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 getting ready to take this to another level. We we get we getting ready to perform at, at, at heights previously unimagined. And the staff, they let me back up so I could do this. The staff is looking at you and they're all sitting at the cafeteria table, the library tables, wherever you are, and they're like this here. <laughs> what this fool say? <laughs> is, is he crazy? Does he know where he is? Does she know where she is? What this what this fool talking about? So now they texting each other, right? <laughs> like you see, you, you heard that fool, right? <laughs> you, you know, so so I'm saying to you, that that happens. That's real. But it becomes incumbent upon you to understand that. And now you're bringing something that hasn't hasn't traditionally been there. True leadership. See, true instructional leadership. But it, but transformation of culture raising or elevating of expectations and standards belief hope promise so you're bringing all those qualities but remember now you can't bring it if you if, if if your posture ain't right right you can't come in there being offensive you can't come in there being defensive you can't come in there ramming down their throats people skills right again i could do a whole whole we could do a whole hour i probably can do a whole day on each individual item but i just want to give you the list i'm gonna keep going i gotta catch myself because every time i get into one i feel like i'm getting ready to go right but I, I gotta catch myself so number uh four how would i handle inheriting a school where a large percentage of students are reading below grade level huh how would i go about or how would i handle inheriting a school where a large percentage of students are reading below grade level well, in my mind, with a large percentage of students reading below grade level, that contradicts your very existence. It contradicts everything you're about because you came into this school to ensure that every youngster is receiving a world-class education. That's why you came here. So now you walk in and the children can't read and we can add mathematics, the children can't compute, but it doesn't mean they don't have the capacity because they were born with it. But some, but there were breakdowns somewhere along the way, multiplicity of breakdowns along the way, but you can't break down with it. So you have to be that structure that remains at that high level. So now you're bringing that sense of hope, that sense of promise, that sense of vision, that sense of mission to that school. You're bringing that but you gotta move strategically as you do it. But you can very well inherit that school that has young people who are reading below standard, who are doing math below standard, who are learning below standard. That's where you come in as a leader. So my question to you was simply, how would you handle it? How would, you, how would I handle inheriting a school where a large percentage of the students are non-readers? 
where a large percentage of the students cannot perform at grade level in mathematics, right? Or any other content area, but, but reading being at the core, because if I can't read, then I can't do anything else. Number five, how would I handle, this is a big one. How would I handle inheriting a missionless school? A school without a mission. How would I handle inheriting a missionless school? So a school that was not on a mission, a school that did not have a mission, a school that did not have a mission statement. It was just a school that was existing. It opened its doors. The people came in. We did whatever we do. And then the dismissal bell rings and they leave. But there's no mission associated with the school. How would your leadership handle that? How would you handle that as this new teacher where you inherited this? Now, keep in mind that chances are you may come in and, and there is a mission, but you decide we're going to change the mission. Well, that's fine, right? That is fine. But I'm saying there's no foundation there. So now you coming in, watch this. The school is going for five, six years, maybe 10 or more. And mission is just not, not a part of the lexicon of the people in the building. That's just not who we are. We're not talking mission. And then here you come in and you put this heavy duty emphasis on mission, having a mission orientation, a mission mindset, and moving along as uh, uh, rooted in your mission. And, and now the staff, they, they, here we go again. I'm like, what? What is that? Right. So so now they're, they're, they're upset, like like mission. And then you, we're reciting it and we're expected to memorize it. Right. And all that kind of stuff, because remember what the mission is. The mission is the bedrock of the school. The mission is the foundation upon which the school stands. The school exists. It defines the school. It's who you are. It's your identity. So I want you to think about a school that does not have that. Right? I want you to think about it. A school that does not have that. Man, that's troubling. That's alarming. Because now the question becomes, well, then who are you? What are you? What are you about? See, it's, a, it's like a ship without a rudder. Not gonna be any moving, not gonna be too much movement outside of going straight without the rudder. So got to have the rudder. That's the mission. So you came into a mission-less school where people are not thinking along the lines of mission because that's not a part of the culture of the school. You have to make it culture. So, so as a as a new principal, certainly you want to give staff an opportunity to give lend input to the mission. But if it's if but if they're so far detached and removed from it then you may have to impose it until you build a culture where now we embrace the concept and now let's put our heads together and formulate a mission that speaks to who and what we are and who and where we're going, right? That's that's critical. But coupled with number five, who? how would I handle inheriting a missionless school is number six. How would I handle inheriting a, 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 a visionless school? Let me say that again without the stutter. How would I handle inheriting a visionless school? Oh my God. Imagine that. A school, you walk in, they had no vision. You, I mean, you walk into the school as this new principal, they had no vision. In fact, I'm talking to primarily APs here and aspiring APs. You walk into a school as a new AP and there's no mission or vision. Or you're in a school right now. You've been there for a while as an AP. But you check in with Kefele on Saturdays. And now I'm sitting here preaching to you that a school without a vision is a school that's going nowhere. And then you, you know, the best you could do at that juncture is say, ouch, <laughs> right? Because you're in there. I'm saying a, a school without a vision, that means you, you, you're you just wandering. Like It's like, Imagine going outside, right, on a nice sunny day, like up here in Jersey, it's nice outside. It's supposed to be one of the nicest days thus far. Imagine you just go outside and you just go stroll. You just walk. <laughs> no rhyme, no reason as to where you're going. You just out there walk. Why waste your time? Don't, don't you have a vision of where you're going and why you're doing it, right, to make it more productive? Right, so I'm saying here, well, think about a school where there's no vision. Like, like where are we going to be in a year from now? Where are we going to be in three years from now? Where are we going to be in five years from now? And it doesn't exist. 
That's a visionless school that's not going anywhere. You have to bring that message to your school. That's that's on you. Hey, somebody, I got two fingers at you. That's on you. Number seven, there's a big one. How would I handle inheriting a school where its brand identity runs counter to its mission and vision? That one's so explosive, I need to read it twice. Number seven, how would I handle inheriting a school where its brand identity runs counter to its mission and vision? So in other words, every school has a brand. All schools have a brand. That's their identity. Now, whether or not you control the brand is another story. I haven't even done any sessions on brand. I probably need to do one. Maybe maybe coming soon because I haven't done anything with brand. And brand is one of my core topics. So every school has a brand. Every entity has a brand. Everybody's got a brand. I have a brand. I have a Saturday brand. And it's a lot of it's rooted in these jerseys I wear. We all have brand. If if I if I showed up on one of these 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 broadcasts without a jersey on at this juncture, for the people who watch me a lot, if not all fifty five weeks, you would be surprised. And I know you'd be in the chat talking about where's where's your your jersey? Because sometimes when I'm doing broad when I'm when I'm doing PD during the week virtually, and I and and you know obviously I don't wear the jersey because it's for Saturday. So people that watch watch this who I'm speaking to their school. They will write in the chat, where's the jersey? And then I see it. I say, that's not for this. That's not that that brand is for Saturday, not what I'm talking to your school. So everything's got a brand. But the question is, do you control the brand? Better question is, did you define the brand? Did you create the brand? And is it consistent with what you want it to be? Or did the community create the brand based on their perception of who you are? Well, Looking at number uh, seven is saying, how would I in how would I handle inheriting a school where its brand, and in this case, what the community created, runs counter to the mission and vision that the school created? So, in other words, the, the mission that the school created is sound. The vision that the school created is sound, but the perception of the school relative to how the, the community sees the school is unsound. There's a contradiction, no connection, missing, contradiction. So now, therefore, in the eyes of the public, your mission and vision are meaningless because they're seeing you according to how they see you. As leader, you have to fix that. There's got to be consistency and continuity between how you see your school and how your the outside public sees your school so they see it as one one in the fist what you say and what they see are congruent that matters number 8 man every time i go through one of these and say the next number i'm saying i could do a whole session on just the one number so so this is probably going to be 30 other sessions right so let me keep going number 8 how would I handle inheriting a school with a large number of unmotivated students? I don't need to do a lot of commentary on that. What I'm saying to you is, chances are when you step into a new building, you'll, you will have a percentage of unmotivated students. I'm only asking you to give consideration to who would you be in that moment? Just think about it, right? What? How would you lead? What are the structures you put in place? How would you go? How would you go about your day to day activities? What is it that you would, what, what are the mechanisms that you would put in place that increase the probability that young people will be inspired? Young people will be motivated. You cannot avoid that thinking. You cannot avoid going through that process because at any given school, there are students who are legitimately unmotivated. Students who are dealing with their own challenges outside of school, which manifest in the school, which are legitimate. So now the question becomes, what do you do to take that student whose lack of motivation is justified just based on life, the, the, the hand that was dealt at birth and beyond? What are you going to do to help that youngster to become motivated? That's what you got to be thinking about. Let's keep going. Number nine. 
How would I handle inheriting a school in an economically disadvantaged community with its accompanying challenges? Right. So not so much that it's de economically disadvantaged, but the challenges that are associated with it. And, you know, we, we, we can spend we can go 24 hours just talking about the challenges that are accompanied with it. I'm asking you, how do you confront those challenges? How do you meet those challenges? Because they are real. I'm going to keep going. Number 10, how would I handle inheriting a school with a culture? Don't mind all that banging, y'all. How would I handle a school, inheriting a school with a culture of generating a huge volume of disciplinary referrals? Wow, I'm going to read that one again. How would I handle inheriting a school with a culture? And that's the, that's the you know, that word is key because I didn't just say where there are disciplinary referrals running rampant. I said a culture of generating a huge volume of disciplinary referrals. So now here you are. Superintendent says, OK, we, we, we're going to offer you a position and we're sending you to that school. And then you get there. The superintendent didn't tell you or he may he or she may have told you that there there's some there's some real issues there, not issues with the children. Issues with generating referrals for for behaviors which could be rectified very easily. So instead of having a culture within a classroom where these behaviors don't even rear, um, they're, they're, we're, we're, I don't even want to use that, that expression, where those behaviors don't manifest. What are you going to do? How are you going to attack that? Where, where, where everywhere you walk, man, teachers are writing disciplinary referrals. And then you you go down to the main office area or wherever students are sent. And there are these long lines of students, right? These long lines of students waiting to be seen as if they were going to the doctor's office to be seen by their doctor. Right. What are you, what are you going to do to curb that, to eradicate that, to eliminate that? I'm saying to you, if you are an assistant principal right now and you're not even getting ready to take on the new position, you got you you, you got to think about it, right? Let me see what I'm, I'm reading something here. This was number nine. I'm looking at. Yeah, yeah, no, no. Uh, um, Sherrod Laws, number nine was how would I handle inheriting a school in an economically disadvantaged community with its accompanying challenges? That was number nine, and now number ten, how would I handle inheriting a school with a culture? of generating a huge volume of disciplinary referrals. So I'm saying to you, the word culture is key here because there's a culture, a way of life that we feel if youngster deviates from my expectation, right? Like like, like, like if youngster deviates from perfection, <laughs> like I, I wanted youngster to be perfect, but youngster, you know, I want youngster to walk this path, but youngster was walking this path. So assistant principal so-and-so, <laughs> here's a referral. And I'm so mad that some of it's underscored and in red ink. <laughs> take take this down to, to the assistant principal or the dean of students or, or maybe the principal because there's because it's a small school, whatever it is. How are you going to handle that? What programs, right? What strategy? What activity? What message? You know, what, whatever it is, I'm not, you know, I'm not going to get on here endorsing programs that are not paying me. So, so I want, I see some of you are right. You, you guys could do that, but I'm not going to endorse them because they ain't giving me a dime. Right. But, but I will say this, those programs that are out there, but, and those programs are good, but, 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 but let me say this to you. Let me highlight you for a minute. Programs are good, but we don't always need programs. Sometimes we just need some, some real hardcore common sense. Right. It's like I, I remember, you know, being, being on the consultant um, circuit and, and and I'm talking about, you know, ways to transform behaviors and teachers. I mean, I would hear this all the time. They're saying, man, you sound like PBIS. Right. Which I guess I just endorsed somewhat. They said, you sound like PBIS. And I'm saying to myself, I ain't never read a PBIS document if ever. I, I, don't, I don't even know what. what I don't even know what it is, right? So they, they'll say to me, man, you sound just like PBIS with, 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 with these, these strategies that you've been giving us. I'm just using common sense. So if they built a multi-million dollar organization on common sense, then fine. 
But I'm saying I'm just using common sense. I'm like, look, we're talking about changing behaviors. So therefore, what can we do differently from what we're already doing? That's 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 what I'm saying in that regard. So when your team comes together and you roll up the sleeves, man, and y'all y'all strategizing. Like, OK, what what can we do in an equitable environment where we consider that no two students are alike? They're, they're not alike. So how do we meet the needs of them all? I'm saying all that to say this just to, to support that question. How would I handle inheriting a school with a culture? That's the word of generating a huge volume of disciplinary referrals. That's on you. That's on you. Next, number 11. How would I handle inheriting a school with student attendance and tardiness challenges? Right? What would I do? Got student attendance and tardiness challenges, right? You got to work on that. So again, I don't I don't need to go in depth with that. I'm, I'm, I'm just laying out some things for you to think about. You may walk into a school and the reason that underachievement exists is because a large percentage of your students are not coming to school or a large percentage of your students are not showing up on time. They're missing first period. So therefore, that first period class, whatever that subject area is or that content area is, um, students are suffering. Well, what will you put in place to ensure that youngsters are arriving on time? That's what the question is asking. Let's keep it moving. Number um, number 12, how would I handle inheriting a school with a toxic climate and culture, staff and students, right? A toxic climate and culture. Now, we talked a lot about that in previous weeks, so you can just go back to those videos and watch them. I'm just saying to you, you inherited this school. The climate of this school, meaning the mood, the culture of this school, meaning the um, meaning the lifestyle, <laughs> it's toxic, man. It's poison. What you gonna do? And 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 you certainly can't become a part of it. But you 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 can't succumb to it. You gotta you gotta transform that. But again, I spent hours on that. Just go back to the previous videos; they're all on YouTube. YouTube, the virtual AP Leadership Academy channel, and see my thoughts. Hey, listen to my thoughts on climate and culture. Uh, number third, let me let me see where I am. Number 13, how would I handle inheriting a school with a high dropout rate? So at height at the high school level, we find that we're only graduating 70% of our students. We're only graduating 80% of our students. We're only graduating 90% of our students. Now, somebody might say, well, 90, come on now, Kefele, that's that's good. Okay, but 10% didn't graduate, right? And, 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 and you know, I don't want to be hypocritical. I just, I just want to put it out there. But 10% didn't graduate. So what do, we, what do we have for them, right? But the 80%, 20% didn't graduate. The 70%, 30% didn't graduate. The 60%, 40% didn't graduate. Now, one could say, okay, but we came from 50. Fine, you're growing. But what will you do to sustain the growth? So you were at 50, and then you get the job, right? So what will you do to sustain that so we can go to 60, so we can go to 70, or, or maybe increments a little bit greater, we can go from 50 to 70, 70 to 90. I'm saying to you, as, as one who's, who wants to transition into the principalship, this is something you've got to consider if it's at the high school level. What is it about my leadership that will encourage young people to stay in school until graduation? You got to be thinking that you got to be considering that now. You don't wait until you get the job and then say, OK, oh, my God, look at this. Thirty percent of these kids are not graduating. A lot of them are my boys. What am I going to do No, You don't. you don't now. OK, let me put forth a plan. No. If you're sitting right now as a teacher who watches these videos because you aspire to become a, a, an administrator one day, you need to be thinking about that now. You might even want to not spend all your time on teacher thinking, but now you, it's time to start transitioning to leadership thinking, right? Administrator thinking. And how would I reduce and ultimately eliminate a potential dropout problem, right? Let's keep moving. Number 14, here's a big one. How would I handle inheriting an unsafe school? Huh, now I, can, I, I can go a few hours on this one. I won't though. How would I go about inheriting an unsafe school? So now teachers are not necessarily guaranteed to be safe. 
many students are not safe. And, and, and if not physically unsafe, then just just emotionally, like I'm just not comfortable in this environment. You know, there, 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 there are some behaviors in this school that scare me. I'm, I'm scared to go to the boys bathroom. I'm scared to go to the girls bathroom. I'm intimidated. I will hold it all day long to avoid having to go in there. Right. I'm not comfortable going in the cafeteria. I'm not comfortable with the playground. I'm not comfortable with the locker room because this this environment is not safe. Right. Or or if it's if, if there's no one putting their hands on one another, it's just intimidating or maybe they're putting their hands on each other like other students. They're not hitting me, but I see the fighting in the school. So now I'm in this school and it, on average, there's a fight a day. Right. Or two fights a day or a fight every other day. Well, I have to walk past that to go to class. So although I'm not a target. Just the fact that these vicious fights are occurring in my school, in my hallways or in my classroom, I don't feel comfortable. Right. I don't feel that I'm in an environment that's safe because at some point that behavior could turn on me. That's what I mean. So now I'm saying to you, you don't wait to get hired. And now let me see if I can put forth a plan with my team. No. You start thinking about that at 12 o'clock when I end this broadcast or a few minutes over, right? When I end this broadcast and think about what would I do to ensure that not only with fighting, but everything about the school is safe, right? Like, like you know, I know, you know, I'm keeping it real again. There are schools and this happens. I think this happens at the middle school level more than anywhere where a young man may think that he can touch a young lady's breast with no consequences. Like I can do that. It's all ha ha. It's fun, fun. I didn't mean anything by it. Well, he might have thought it was okay, but not her. And now, and and now she's feeling feeling very upset and angry about the experience, which may stay with her for the rest of her life. And the question is. In what way did you intervene? And was it fair? And and, and did it accommodate accommodate her? I see you, Byrie. Did it accommodate her? Right? Did she feel comfortable with whatever the decision you made was? Right? So so someone might say, oh, that's just a minor thing. No, it's not. I don't, I'm, I don't, I, I choose not to get um personal with that particular example, but I'm going to tell you this. And if there are people that know me from like way back, they, 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 they know how I handled that. Um, I, I took that like extremely seriously. There's no girl that's ever been a part of my school that some boy may have inappropriately touched her. There's no girl that will pop up now at age 30 and 40, because that's how old a lot of those students are now, that will pop up and say, that happened to me and Mr. Kefele didn't handle it. Now that, that won't happen. That won't happen. I, I, I can take that to my grave. That young lady, if that young lady ever emerges, she will say, my principal handled that. See, I can't have young people in an environment that they feel unsafe. So I'm asking you, how would you handle inheriting an unsafe school? Number 15, how would I handle inheriting a school with a heavy gang population? Now, now that you know that's a whole set, that's a whole lecture. That's a whole lecture. That, that's a few lectures. But I'm, a, I'm only sharing it with you now to say <laughs> if you're in an urban school, because see a lot, it's a lot of it's a lot of staff in urban schools that don't realize they have a gang problem because they don't know what to look for. But there's a whole lot of urban schools and it may not be a gang problem. It may be a gang presence. Right. But you'd be hard pressed to find urban schools that don't have gang, a gang presence within the school. You'd be hard pressed. I don't care if you in just deep south or, or, or up north. They're there. Right. So. So therefore, as you become the leader of this school, how are you going to handle that? Because if, because of their rivals or if their things happening in the street, they pit sets against sets. It's going to manifest in your building. Some of you know that. So what are you what are you what are you thinking right now as you're preparing for that school that may have that as an issue? Moving on. Number 16. How would I handle inheriting a school with low staff morale? Oh, man. I, man, I, I mean, when I wrote this one, I said I need an hour on this. one. 
I'm just I'm just putting it out there today, folks. I'm just putting it out there. I'll probably come back and do a, a session on each of these, right? Because each of them, they matter, right? Michelle has a full class. <laughs> All of these, they're full. So how would you handle inheriting a school with low staff morale? I mean, they they just, they, they, they tired, y'all. They worn out. They burnt out. They lost their way. They lost their will. Their passion became their work and they lost their why, right? So now what you going to do? You walk in there, you're the new leader. Just your presence alone is not going to elevate their morale. I mean, just having a new body and leadership might do something for some of them. But 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 that novelty where that honeymoon is over real quick. And now what are you going to do? They want to know what are you going to do? What are you going to do to change the reality? here? That matters. So 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 I want you thinking about that. Enough, enough said there. Number tw number 17. How would I handle inheriting a school where administration is not respected by staff? You think that's not real? <laughs> Where administration is not respected by staff. So you walk in there first day and you're not respected just because of your title. You were respected yesterday when you were teacher, but now you walked in there and you're administrator and all that respect that you used to have is gone, right? So now what, what, what are you going to do, right? What are you going to do that now you walk into this building and there's a, there's, there's a wall, there's a, there's a barrier of a us against them. See, that's got to be eliminated because it can't be a us against them. It can't be an administration and staff. It's got to be a us. It's got to be a we. And that's what I want you thinking about now. And that's why I bring that up again. I think my plan will be to make each of these a separate presentation. Right. Let me go quickly. I said I was going to end at 12. Man, I got a few more to go. Let me go fast. Number 18. How would I handle inheriting a school with poor staff attendance? Right. So I just want you thinking about that. Right. I'm going to keep going because I want to I don't want to keep you guys. Number 19, how would I handle inheriting a school where staff collaboration is virtually non-existent? So there is no collaboration, right? They're in their separate little, 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 little vestibule, so to speak, right? It, it, but, but they don't come out. And now here we are working together, right? So let me, let me put this on the screen here. This was an interesting one. My principal was public enemy number one last year and that's what i'm speaking to so let's say there's somebody out there come on cafe what are you talking about that's not real world <laughs> shirai just told you all right my principal was public enemy number one last year see and then kevin jack said look respect is earned right good stuff let's keep moving so how would, number 18 how would i handle inheriting a staff with poor attendance and then 19 was, how would I handle inheriting a school where staff collaborations virtually non-existent? Let me keep moving. 20, how would I handle inheriting a school where there are staff members who do not get along with one another? Oh, man. So, so staff don't like each other. Or there are staff members that just, I ain't feeling you. They don't get along. They don't speak. And then they talk about each other. I've been there. I, I've been in these situations, particularly when I was a teacher. I heard the stuff. Man, so-and-so in room, room 205. <laughs> right? So the children lose. But you lead her. And you have, your antenna's got to be so high that you, that, that you are able to gauge that that is happening right under your nose. And what do you do to bring that team together? Again, I'm going to say it again. These are all separate presentations. I'm just giving you a list today. Let me keep moving. Um, number 21, how would I handle a, in, inheriting a school where lesson planning is not the norm? Now, you know that's what I want to spend another hour on, right? I, but I don't have time. But 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 here, what you going to do? Like, like you walked into a school, they don't do lesson plans. They ain't done lesson plans in a decade. Principal said, lesson plans? So in the mind of the principal, I ain't got time to be reading. I ain't got time to be reading these things. But but the action of the principal, oh, we don't need this. I, I trust my staff. But 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 that's not what it is. It, it, you know, I, I trust my staff. You 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 are you are you a D school, a, a F school, a C school. Oh, I trust my staff. I, I I don't have to watch over them like that. But see, was that's that's like on the surface. But what's really happening inside? I ain't got time to be reading all the lesson plans. See, so. Either way, everybody loses. Everybody suffers, right? I'll get to that again later. Let me keep moving. Um, number 20, uh, 22, I'm almost done. How would I handle inheriting a school where missing deadlines is normal? Oh, man, I'm a stickler for that. That's a pet peeve of mine. 
Can't miss no deadlines. If, if, if I expect it on May 15, that's when I expect it. Right. But but if you got staff in there because previous administration was like, well, if you get it to me on the 16th, we good. If you get it to me on the 17th, we good. No, you got to change that culture. If you said 15, then dag on it is due on the 15th. And if you said the 15th at eight o'clock as you walk in, then that's when it's due. Not, oh, can I get it to you by tomorrow morning? No, because if you said the 15th, it's because you need it on the 15th. Now, I can't wait for people to get these documents in that I need to compile into whatever it is. So you have to set a standard you and create a culture. Now, if you're one that misses deadline, this is a whole other presentation now, because if you're the one and the staff realizes that, how are you going to change them when they see you're never on time? When they see that you never get things in on time? When they see you walking in the building as the students are walking in the building? And they, they see that you're lax in meeting deadlines. They see that you said the staff meeting was three and here you come walking in at 315. It doesn't work. It has a ripple effect throughout the building. Let me keep moving because I, I, I could preach on every one of these. Number 23. Um. How would I handle inheriting a school where going above and beyond is non-existent, right? Nothing to be said there. Let me keep moving. 24, how would I handle inheriting a school where parental engagement slash parental participation at the building level is virtually non-existent? Hmm. That means you got a lot of work to do. I got, I got six more. How would you handle inheriting a school where chaos is normal and anticipated? Woo! How would you how would I handle a school and, and how would I handle inheriting a school where chaos is normal and anticipated? And that's your new building, your first principalship. And that's what you walk in on. Don't wait. Don't wait. Don't wait and see if that's where you go. It's time to plan for that today. I don't care if you a teacher and you still in grad school. It's time now. Number um, 26. How would I handle inheriting a school that has a horrible reputation in the community? I kind of touched on that with brands. I don't need to go further with that. When I do it as an isolated uh, topic, then we'll, we'll do that. Number 27, how would I handle inheriting a school that has bad community relations? So like your relations, your school's relations with the community is toxic or non-existent. It's just not healthy. How are you going to fix that? So that the community, you got human resources, you got human capital in the community. The community is an asset to the school. Number 28, how would I handle inheriting a school where the facility has been poorly maintained? You, your building leaking all over the place, pipe ruptures all over the place, the paint's peeling, it's ugly, it's unattractive, the computers don't work. You know, I mean... I, the, the infrastructure of the computers is, is always down, you know, but just just problem after problem. Right. The tiles on the, the, the cafeteria floors are coming up. You know, how are you going to handle this facility where, where it was not maintained? That's part of principal leadership, too. Number twenty nine. I told you I'm almost done. It's how would I handle inheriting a filthy school that needs lots of attention? So when I say filth, one could say, well, we could just sweep it up. No, I don't mean that way. I mean, it's so filthy that when you mop the floor, it's still filthy. That's what I mean. I mean, that dirt is embedded into the tiling. That's what I mean. How are you going to handle it? You going to just let that go? Like, okay, I got bigger fish to fry. I got I got, I got, to raise the achievement levels. I got to change the culture. I got to raise the morale. No, nah, you can't raise morale when, when staff and students are coming into filth every day. Even if your school is old, you got to make it something. Right. I'm almost done. Number uh, number 30. Last one is principal leadership really for me. So in other words, the title becomes the last question is principal leadership really for me. And see, y'all, look at that. Twelve on the button. Man, I'm good. Pat myself on the back, man. But 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 again, I think I'm going to take all 30 of these and turn these into um, uh, sessions throughout the year. Because, you know, we, we're going up to 100 and, you know, I'm going to go past 100. But right now I'm just going to keep it at 100. We talk about beyond later. So let me close out. Let me give you this parting question. Um, And, and by the way, if, if, if you found this session, I, I keep meaning to ask you guys this, but I, I forget this is the first time I'm thinking about it. If you found this session productive, either give me a thumbs up or or um or just write in there, yes, it, I, I found it productive for me. Just let me know, right? 
that's 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 my feedback. If you found this to be rewarding, to uh, 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 productive for you at, in terms of your journey, then, then give me a thumbs up or just um, put yes in the comments and I'll know what it's for. My parting question is emer if, if an emergency arose in your district and, and, and the principal could not be at the school, would you be ready to step in tomorrow? If an emergency arose and the principal had to be pulled out of the school for whatever the reason, would you be ready to step in tomorrow? Right. Again, starting next week. New format. First Saturday. Let's talk AP leadership. The remaining Saturday, second Saturday. Let's talk classroom equity. Third Saturday. Let's talk social justice education. Fourth Saturday. Let's talk AP and principal leadership. Fifth Saturdays, when they arise, we'll figure it out. Now, I don't know if I'm going to start that sequence next week or if I'm going to wait till first Saturday. Next week, I may very well stay with the assistant principal uh, format that I've already started and start new on the on June 5th, which will be the first Saturday in June. Remember, these two books, Assistant Principal 50 and Aspiring Principal 50, if you don't have them, get them. Order them today. Thank you for keeping them bestsellers. And then the new one. Comes out May 26. I appreciate all of you out there who have been doing these, pre getting those pre orders in and keeping it number one on Amazon because that's what it's been for about four weeks. Number one new release under administration, although it's not an administrative book, but that's where they placed it. So I won't complain. Right. So I appreciate you guys for doing so and keep on. If you don't have it, get it. The Equity and Social Justice Education 50, written by Baruti Kafele. Don't ever put Principal Kafele when you're trying to find my books. Put my first name, Baruti Kafele, or put Kafele. Uh, visit principalcafele.com for other resources. Subscribe to my virtual AP Leadership Academy channel on YouTube and like and follow my virtual AP Leadership Academy Facebook page, right? So I got all that out there. Make sure you, you, you check it out and I write my commentaries. I had it on time last week. I'll have it on time tomorrow on that page my ap commentary and then finally your diet stay on top of it i mean i'm back in the gym y'all i'm back in there your exercise so take care of business and then your COVID 19 precautions you know there's a lot i could say right now because I, I don't know what's happening with the cdc i don't I, I i really don't understand i won't get into that on this on this platform but i'm fully vaccinated but i'm not understanding what, what what's happening right now but that's for another day and another time i appreciate all you guys have a great week have an extraordinary week have your best week yet peace peace thumbs up cock that fist all the way back and count to three with me one two three bam appreciate you let me know if this session was worth your while. Let me know if it was productive. Let me know if it was rewarding. Give me a thumbs up or just put yes or, or, or make a comment about it. I'll see it when I go through them this afternoon. Thank you. See you next week, 1055 Eastern Daylight Time for week 56.